Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at the Seiko SBDX029, which is the Seiko and Mobile Suit Gundam 40th Anniversary collaboration. And this specific model is a tuna. So before we get into the watch, let's talk a little bit about the tuna. And the reason it's called the Seiko Tuna or the Tuna Can is because of its massive case size and the shroud that it has. It looks exactly like a canned tuna that you would see in a grocery store. So that's kind of like a cool story of why it's called the Tuna. Seiko's first diver came in at 1965 when they first made the 62 Moss. That watch was their first professional diver with a depth rating of 150 meters, which was a lot for the time, and it was very serious compared to other divers. And then one day in 1968, a professional saturation diver wrote a letter to Seiko complaining about how older divers' watches' crystals pop once they max out the depth rating and that they weren't quite suitable for the type of saturation diving that he was doing. Seiko took it upon themselves to look into the matter and listen to the customer and build something that was actually capable of handling that. So they started off in 1968 building this brand new watch from scratch. It took them seven years to develop it and they had to come up with a way where they could have a watch that could submerse in those extreme conditions and have an insane depth rating. But Seiko wanted to address one issue, which was the crystal popping once you get deep enough. It wasn't so much as keeping water out, but it was the combination of that with the pressure rating that gets much higher the deeper you go. So what Seiko did was they developed a Monaco case, which is like a single block case, and it has no case back. And the movement is inserted from the top all the way down, and then the dial and the crystal and the bezel to lock it all into place. And they created their own type of gaskets and escapements to avoid the whole issue of even having a helium escape valve like their competitors. So not only did the tuna have crazy depth rating, but there was no helium escape valve either thanks to its case construction and escapement design. They reduced the amount of helium during saturation in their watches by one out of a hundred just because of their smart design that they came up with. So in 1975, full seven years after the initial process of building the tuna came about, they finally released their first tuna, which had a depth rating of 600 meters. And ever since then, the tuna has been a staple of Seiko, and it's been their most extreme hardcore watch, and it's been very legendary. Hate it or love it, you gotta admit that it's an amazing watch with some crazy thought behind it, and it can do things that other watches just simply can't do. So the Tuna had a couple evolutions throughout its lifetime. Once the Prospect sub-brand started, Seiko revamped the Tuna once again, and it went through different eras of being automatic and then having a quartz movement as well. The quartz movement was also very robust. And then in 2014, Seiko had already launched a new a new line of Prospects tuna divers with the depth rating of a thousand meters. These new thousand meter tunas with the automatic movement, the high caliber 8L35, which is actually a an undecorated and unregulated version of the Grand Seiko 9S55 movement. And once they threw that high-end movement into the tuna and they gave it that monstrous depth rating and increased the millimeter size one millimeter from 51 to 52 millimeters, it became widely known as the Emperor Tuna or the tuna with the highest specs and the latest tech possible. The tuna's case, Monaco case, is made out of titanium to reduce weight, but also to be strong enough and light enough to go to those extreme depths without cracking or getting any kind of leaks in them. In 2014, the tuna was tested and they took two automatic tunas and two of the quartz tunas, otherwise known as the Darth tuna, because they were the all black models, and they strapped them to a Seiko board. And this cardboard was then strapped onto some kind of submersive and it was then tested to see how far the true depth rating of the tuna really is. As the tuna started going down, they noticed that there was no sign of slowing down or loss of accuracy once they reached the 1000 meter mark. Then they went lower to 2000 meters and still nothing happened to them. Then they went down to 3000 meters. The watches were working perfectly fine, but they noticed the case backs were starting to deform a little but still perfectly working and fully intact. When they finally reached 3,200 meters, that's when the quartz models finally stopped ticking and that second hand stopped moving. It took the automatic movement tunas all the way down to 4,299 meters before the second hand stopped ticking. 
So even though these tunas are rated at a thousand meters, it's just so amazing that they can actually survive all the way down past 4,000 meters, which is what the Rolex Deep Sea Sea Dweller is rated at, technically 3,900 meters. And it's just so cool that a Seiko tuna model can go beyond the rating of a really high-end Rolex. And ever since then, Seiko definitely left their mark in the diving world. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So this one is an Emperor Tuna as well. And it just has this black outer sleeve. And being a mobile suit collaboration model, they made three different watches. They had two Tuna divers, which are based on the Zakus from Mobile Suit Gundam, if you guys have watched that. And they had one GMT model, which had a spring drive movement, which was based on the Mobile Suit RX 78-2. And this model, which I have, is actually the antagonist of the show. So this is based on Char's Zaku 2, and he's part of the Xeon fleet. And Char nicknamed his Gundam the Red Comet. It was otherwise in a totally identical Zaku, but it was just red instead of green. But it was three times faster than the normal Zaku. In a sea of green Zaku, you have that one red one. So it kind of made it all the more special, and I kind of felt like I had to go for that one. Especially since he was the villain of the show. He just has this very cool and bad demeanor to him, which I kind of think represents fully what the tuna is. So let's go ahead and take a look. On the back of the outer box, they have this really cool Gundam sticker. And the box is actually made out of wood. So it's wood covered in leather. So it's a really high quality box. So the box comes in this really awesome matching red burgundy like leather box. Very high quality. The top is padded. Very nice. It's really soft. And you have this Xeon gold symbol right there on the top. Otherwise, it's completely identical to the regular tuna boxes. A regular tuna box would just be black and it might say Seiko on the top. So for this limited edition, what they did was change the color of the leather to red and they put that logo right up there for the real Gundam fans. Because the tuna's already the top of the top in Seiko's lineup. So they kind of already gave it the best box default. So there wasn't much that the collaboration wanted to do and they wanted to just keep that box. So inside you get the warranty card. This is a JDM exclusive model. So you get the Japanese warranty. And here it is. This is the instructions guide for the 8L35 movement. Seiko's more professional line of divers as opposed to their normal ones. So inside the box, you can see it just says Seiko Prospects, just like the normal tuna would have in there. Looks like the watch is wrapped up. And there you go, guys. This thing is just a beast. Crazy. So the inside of the box is really nice. You have like this little place to kind of cushion your watch. It's very simple and clean design. Feels like a very high-end luxury watch box. And there you go, guys. You get that beautiful red, almost maroon color dial. It's the exact same color as Charizaku, and I think it looks so cool. There's that wave off Kanagawa at the end of the strap. And this is a really smooth and soft strap. I gotta admit, the quality on this strap is probably the nicest I ever felt. Not just on any Seiko model, but just in general. Very soft, very high-end, which I'm not surprised, of course, they're gonna keep that for their highest-end model. And you'll see this beautiful ceramic shroud, which is what the tuna is kind of also known for. And it's like this very nice, shiny ceramic. And right there, it says MS06S, which is the number of Charizaku. And that lock is actually a throwback to the tunas of the old days. Surprisingly, this collaboration model is the only one that has that lock. The newer ones don't say that on there. On the ceramic part like that and there's the logo that's a really cool detail to sign the crown with and if you look closely you can see the second hand is this yellow gold color and that is supposed to look like char's beam sword that his gundam has it is that exact color and i think that looks really cool if they chose to go with that because it kind of looks just like his beam sword and the writing right there where it says a thousand meters under the prospects x is written in there the same writing which is on the gundam in the show and at the tip of the second hand that almost pink bright red circle is supposed to look like the eye of char zaku and all the zaku have like that pink uh, red eye and that is also apparent on the green zaku model as well you have char's logo right up there on the strap which looks amazing and you have this matching titanium buckle which is the same color as the ceramic shroud here the bezel and the titanium case back exactly the same color so it looks really nice i love how they went for that most of the tunas are going to have the same ceramic shroud as the strap. This looks very unique to me how the shroud is such a different color than the strap and the dial and bezel. And you have that wave off Kanagawa right back there and Mobile Suit Gundam 40th anniversary limited editions out of a thousand pieces total. So really limited 
You have that black date window, which looks really nice. So this was at the tail end of the previous generation of tunas. So you'll notice that even though it has the previous generation handset and markers that the Marine Master dial would have, where it says Marine Master instead of automatic with the Prospects logo, but they are raised markers, just like the new generation of the Prospects line, which I thought was really interesting. And I love how they still have that professional writing right under automatic to let you know that it's a serious hardcore diver. The chapter ring is actually supposed to represent the power cord that the Zakus have running around their, their mouth or helmet. So that's really nice. Another thing that this has in common with the newer generation tunas is that the bezel is actually raised further up than the crystal on the dial. So there's a gap right there you can kind of see a black ring kind of goes around that the bezel is higher than the crystal and that is for protection and I think it's just a more secure design to retain that depth rating that this watch has. The bezel action on this, really nice. And you could just hear those like very solid click and there's no play, it's very tight. Once it's in a position, it's locked in. There's no pushing it out or in the other direction. Like a cheaper diver would kind of have a little play to go back. This one, there's no give at all. It's just very tight, very secure, feels very high end. And the bezel insert, I'm not sure the kind of material this is, but it's kind of like a matte finish on this. And it almost looks like you could see through it. Like it could be glass, like frosted glass or something of the sort. It is loomed from the 12 o'clock all the way down to the 20 mark. So you might be able to see that it's even right now is glowing a little. And I just can't get over the color of this. I mean, this just stands out so much versus other tunas. It's very unique, very different, very vibrant color. And here's the tag on this one. So it even says Prospects Marine Master on here, 1000 meters. And here is the hang tag. So it has a Seiko Prospects tag. There's the model SPDX029 and the price 400,000 yen, which comes out to roughly $3,600. And that's currently in line with the current Seiko Tunas. The price is still hovering around there, if not more. They actually went up a bit. So this is almost like a bargain because you're getting all the features of the new Tuna minus the markers and handset, but all the added features that the new one has. Plus it's a collaboration model because I believe the new Tunas retail for around $41.99 now. Just a really cool watch, guys. Another thing I want to point out is the other side of this strap is actually designed with these ridges. And this pattern is actually supposed to help with grip on a wetsuit. And here it is on wrist, guys. And I have a six and a half inch wrist. So I just want to say that this being 52 millimeters, almost 53, is an awesome fit. I mean, for such a beast, it's so comfortable. It's so light. You don't even feel like... It's taking up that much space on your wrist. I can still see the straps from the top and bottom, which means that it's a good fit. It doesn't feel like it's too big. And I don't know what it is, but it just feels right at home. Like very cool, very solid feeling watch, very high end. And I know a lot of you are probably scared of how big this watch is, but don't be. I mean, it's a beast and it's amazing. And I think once you start getting into these kind of quirky Seikos, you start to appreciate this and you tend to like this more than the more expensive watches or like the Swiss counterpart. Something about these just have so much charm. It's just an unexplainable feeling that you get when you have one of these. Just a very cool watch overall. And to me, this watch kind of represents the, it reminds me of like the Toyota Land Cruiser or an F-150 Raptor because it's not the most luxurious brand or watch out there, but it does so much in capability that it kind of justifies the price. Buying a Land Cruiser over a Mercedes S-Class, for example, which will be almost roughly the same amount of money, but two totally different approaches, a nice product, but in different directions. Whereas a Land Cruiser is not going to be as posh and luxurious as an S-Class or as fancy or have crazy exotic materials, but the capabilities that it provides are just amazing. And it still has some luxury features. And that's exactly how I would describe the Tuna. It is the highest end range of the Seiko professional divers line and it has crazy specs and that's not to say that a Grand Seiko dress watch for the same money isn't worth it or for more but with this you just get so much more capability and so much more than just good looks or finishing that it kind of makes you want it for completely different reasons and that's okay because I think it's totally well worth it and even though this is a very sporty and kind of a niche category I think and it would kind of go with many outfits surprisingly well despite given its very dive heavy nature. Another thing you'll notice is this strap. This accordion style strap is actually a creation by the tuna. When Seiko released the tuna, they first started doing this and that's supposed to be for breathability. 
This actually has a patent from Seiko and many other brands have started copying them later on. I think that's really cool. When the Tuna first released, it had over 20 patents and it was the first to do many things. And it's just amazing to know that you have such a beast on your wrist. The top of the top for Seiko, I would say. The Seiko Tuna models are all SLA models for the automatic versions. And the SLA models for Seiko usually mean the highest end models that they have, the most luxurious, use the most expensive parts, etc. All the professional remakes that I have, for example, the SLA 017 62 MOS reissue, that is pretty much prime what you think of when you think of a SLA Seiko model. It is a hardcore diver watch that was remade using, you know, fancy ceramic, the highest end steel, Zeratsu polish, a really high and Grand Seiko Caliber, which was undecorated for Seiko duties. And that's exactly what you get with the Tunas. So these kind of started the SLA trend as they were the highest end models. They used the best movement that Seiko had to offer in a very professional package. The only difference is this one is set in a more professional model, which can do crazy depth that the reissues cannot even think about doing. If you're a Seiko collector and you just gotta have the best of the best, this is definitely it, guys. Easy to say this is the most expensive collaboration model I have bought. It's probably one of my favorites. I mean, not only am I a fan of the collaboration and the color, but just the watch overall is just such a cool beast. And the more I get into these quirky Seikos, the more I'm starting to enjoy them more than the typical Swiss. This is something else and it brings you a different kind of joy that you just kind of can't explain unless you feel it for yourself. Highly recommend you guys to go down to your local ADs and at least try one on. Once you know the history behind the thing and you kind of see its construction and all of the detail that went into making this thing, it's truly worth it. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. All right, I'll see you guys next time.